So guys, uh, welcome to the ICT Forum Breakfast for February. We're sponsored by Queensland AI Hub. They bring business, government and research together through AI programs and events. I'm pretty sure AI wrote that sentence. Thank you very much to AI Hub though, so I really welcome sponsorship. My name's Wayne Moran and I'll be keeping these robust characters on my right and left in line this morning, especially you Harley. I'm glad you sat right next to me. I'll be able to put my hand on you when you go into your seventh minute of your diatribe. Artificial intelligence, is it our friend or is it our foe? To help us answer the questions today, we have got the cream of the ICT Gold Coast sector today. On the uh, friends side of the equation, we've got the uh, director and owner of the artificial intelligence company, longtime friend of mine, Debbie Lodeen. Put your hands together, please. CEO of Queensland AI Hub and CEO of Hidden Gorilla, the queen of the gorillas herself, Tony Pebram. <laughs> Lawyer and owner of uh, Satori Solutions and former commando, Harvey Sabersky. <laughs> Harvey, if I upset you today, mate, give me a chance to apologise first, if that's all right, mate. <laughs> AI foes, the principal of Provis Law and the always insanely busy Jeff Provis. Partner and uh, Head of Risk Analysis at Deloitte's Australia, the Never Risky, Nicola Marshall. <laughs> and a last minute stand-in, Head of Operations, Blockstars Technologies, and always my first call if I ever get arrested, Charlie Dean. <laughs> Charlie's saying ever. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome a few heavy hitters in the room today, a keen friend of the IT industry here on the Gold Coast in Queensland. For that matter, we have State MP for Southport, Rob Mulhook. Give him a round of applause, please. Another technophile here today is uh, current council of Division 11, chairman of council's very pop, uh, powerful Lifestyle and Community Committee and the likely next state member for Burley, Councillor Hammond Vorster. G'day, Hammond. <laughs> I'm no stranger to the tech world, especially given the amount of tech he's deployed in his own campaign for the last six months. General Manager of the Varsity Lakes Community Limited, Sports House Varsity Lakes, a local business owner in Canada Division 11 to replace Councillor Vorster. Please welcome Nick Rohn. Look, we're here to debate today the merits or otherwise of artificial intelligence in business. We have assembled these experts with a single critical requirement. Jeff was pretty insistent on this that all the experts had to have real world experience with the AI impacts of business. I don't know how you got up here then, Jeff. I don't know what's going on there, but <laughs> fair enough. Uh, look, we're looking at their respective resumes. I think it's mission uh, accomplished. Let's get the ball rolling. I'm going to pose some questions to the respective team members, but I'm, I'm asking that, uh, inviting, in fact, all debaters on the uh, stage here to jump in, especially if you're disagreeing with something and other teams uh, are asserting. Uh, to state your case in opposition. Uh, look, Harvey, even if it's only one of your own teammates, you can actually uh, disagree as well, that's fine. Uh, because look, it's the base like these that make sure our uh, community is a healthy uh, and happy uh, community going forward when we can uh, respectfully disagree with everyone. Debbie, we've all seen Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. We have. As uh, do we have AI robots coming to get us anytime soon, or is AI limited to uh, producing cool-looking photos of rabbits driving uh, supercars? Ah, yes, um, AI robots. Well, we do have AI robots, but we're not at the point of uh, what we call singularity. Singularity is when um, the human brain and the AI are the same, like equivalent. Uh, are we at the point of Terminator? No, I do not think so. We're really not as much as information and chat GPT has grown, we're only at its infancy to, ch to tell you the truth. We have a lot to do. Our human brain is very complex and we also have information. So my biggest thing is chat GPT is fantastic, but it's built on data that is very localized to America and Western countries. We have a gazillion countries around the world and that information is their information. So to make a robot human-like, to think like a human, that would take a lot of time and work and effort. To, um, but then again, Elon Musk is implanting chips in human brains, 
I have one myself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it hasn't worked. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's interesting where that will take us. Will it happen in 2030, like Ray Kurzweil um, predicts? I'm not 100% sure it will, but uh, we're certainly on an on a interesting road towards uh, a singularity, I think. Well, it's a little bit disturbing. Charlie, I've got a question for you. Neil, Neil de um, Grasse Tyson says, AI is all peace, love and mum beans. It's no problem at all. However, the uh, digital uh, pulse survey in 2023, Australian Computer Society, they put out this, uh, this uh, survey and they felt that um, around about 90% of all jobs are going to be disrupted by AI. I'm thinking debate moderator might be one of the first to go, but what's the bottom line? Is it really going to be as high as 90%? Um, I think it's going to, oh. uh, I think it's going to take a, a lot of jobs, but I think it'll be a transition, much like the industrial um, revolution, where a lot of machines come in, they automated everybody's tasks, and then you just had humans overseeing those factory lines. And I think that'll be the same thing within the technology space and other industries as well. Oh, fair enough. But okay, well, Tony, what do you think of the what, what are the game-changing uh, advances going to be happening in the world of business for AI? Um, so I witnessed one last week, and I'm looking at the guys on the on the faux side going, oh, regulation and information. My financial advisor last week came to me and said, look at this great product, it's called FinTalker. I'm going, oh, that's great, show me what it does. And it sat there and it pulled through the, all the regulation and all the information and as we had a chat, it was listening, dictating, grabbing everything. By the time we pressed send at the end, there it was. My financial advice, he met all of his regulatory requirements, it was in front of me. I could see exactly what it looked like. He gave me the video, the copy to check. Then he said he'd delete the file. So, you know, some of that conversation that wasn't meant to be in the financial advice disappeared. It was for him a revelation. And that's just one little example about how small business is taking on AI to um, improve their productivity and efficiency. Big business is doing it on a grand scale, but everyone's taking something up and moving forward. Well, Jeff, what are the other industries that are going to be um, disrupted by, um, and maybe you know, being in the forefront of those um, AI losses, what are some of the industries that are going to be um, really truly impacted by AI? Well, obviously, the consumer industry. Well, I think just about every sort of study you're doing, the impact of loss of provide. Am I talking to Alex? That's been a bit. We just were every industry. He, it's been a while since he's sung a song, so it's uh, <laughs> nice and close to the mouth. The encore is just that me that does sing the sing the songs. I think the big issue um, seems to me there are two big issues with AI that are actually cause us all some pause for concern. Am I, am I being heard or? Yeah, right here, right there, yeah. just like that. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Um, the, the first is the potential for the for criminal for criminal activity, fishing. Uh, yeah, all sort of fraud of all of all sorts that clearly can be uh, facilitated by AI. Uh, the corruption of uh, about uh, the entire system of government was the democratic. Um, in the democratic system, it's very important that anyone stands for election actually is authentic. They are the person that you think they are. Um, I think that was a crack at you, Herman. You want to write a reply, mate? <laughs> And not some, not some impersonation. Uh, and I, as we look at the the number of elections around the world this year, some have already was happened, and the really big ones uh, in the US, it causes me some concern that, that you may not get people jet voting for the real Joe Biden, let alone the real Donald Trump, because um, this is just an impersonation. That bothers me. The other thing that I think warrants a lot of very serious reflection is that is AI is artificial intelligence, or I think of it more as automated intelligence. Because it's not really, it's not an independent um, system of thinking. Uh, AI is a, a system of making decisions or getting information, etc., based on information that's put into it. It reflects the value systems that we, that we plug in. Now we all know about political correctness and the, uh, and, and, and the problems that, that arise from people being basically screamed down to comply with um, one view or another 
um, as the dominant view. If you go back 100 years ago, some pretty offensive concepts today were very commonplace. Racism, nationalism, colonialism, sexism. These were all very common values 100 years ago. So if AI had been developed 100 years ago, it would have probably reflected those, those values that today we've moved beyond. As a, as a community, uh, we need to think very carefully about the value systems that will feed into AI and, um, and allow for genuine freedom of expression of thought and make sure that, um, that our basic democratic free thinking um, does, does not become inhibited by the values of this moment in time. People are allowed to express their views, whatever they are, in the marketplace of ideas. Before this debate, I was very concerned Harvey was going to go too long on some of the answers, but uh, I shouldn't have worried. Harvey, uh, <laughs> will a business be able to survive without implementing some form of AI in their business model somewhere? Uh, the answer is yes, every business will survive. Some business will be impacted in one way or another, but no doubt. Like, for example, why is it yeah, like, for example, uh, when TV came to the world, they said that it will kill the radio, it will kill everything. When the internet came to the world, they say it will kill the TV. Actually, TV sales are only increasing annually. So, uh, definitely, AI has already been with human beings for many thousands of years in different forms, not in the form that, that we are calling today AI, but look, let's not even a distinction. All of a sudden, the machine to do what a human being can do faster, quicker, and more efficient. So to say that AI, I think that the name at this stage is a bit ambivalent to call it AI. Because if we look at, uh, for example, already in the 1950s, a very famous and extremely talented British mathematician, Alan Turing, he defined the test for AI, and he called this test the imitation game. And what he said, that when somebody will talk like a human being, to reason like a human being, to the extent that you think that you are talking actually to a human being, not to a machine, this will be AI. Actually, we are not at that stage. But to say something to round up, AI in this form will continue, will develop, and it's already here. There's no way to stop it. There's no way to block it. There's only to develop some level of regulation to ensure the safety of the general public. And the, all the rest is actually in the hands of every individual. To say that somebody will lose a job to AI, he will not lose the job to AI. He will lose the job to somebody that knows how to use AI better than him, not to AI. So nobody will lose a job to say that, for example, the browser will be affected. The browser will not be affected. There will be some sort form of coexistence between the search engines and the AI. Yes, some industries will be affected, like the SEOs, optimization. Optimization will no longer be by keywords, it will be by prediction, precisely the way AI is doing. So I hope the, I answered as succinctly as possible and probably addressed your question. <laughs> Nicola, uh, what are some of the pitfalls we've seen so far with AI? Have you, have you come across any in your own business? Right yes, often? many. And I think you can never unhear me. OK, thank you. Hello. Up, up, up. OK. Um, so there's a few things that I'll just touch on before I go into that particular one. I think. When you think about regulation, it's a great concept, obviously. I work in risk and regulation, love regulation. Um, but you know, there's never been a time more important than now to have a global view on regulation because 
to the other points made around ethics and values that can be built into AI systems, that it's all well and good if everyone's following our regulation, our view of values and ethics in the world, that the reality is going to be very different from that. So I think there's still some really big questions to solve as a kind of global community around what's acceptable in the application of AI, how it's going to be used, what values we all sign up to and how that affects you know, our daily lives, our, our children's lives, our customer experience, etc. So it's a pretty big question, but I think around... Is that what AI needs, is some successes now to sort of prove its worth? Yeah, and I, absolutely, and there's plenty of examples of successes, right, in terms of, you know, driving huge efficiency, getting rid of boring administrative tasks, etc., driving cars safer than we drive cars ourselves. But again, it introduces new ethical considerations such as you know, I have a Tesla, I love it, but if my Tesla decided to crash into a group of 10 people as opposed to hitting the three children on the road, would we be comfortable with that ethical decision being made? Um, you know, so there's some pretty interesting considerations at scale that I think we're still going to, well, you know, as, as was described earlier, we're at the forefront of understanding what they are and what the impacts of those are going to be on our, on our business. Um, but in terms of, you know, big wins, I think we're seeing lots of our clients get some real value out of using AI um, now. And traditional AI has been around for generations, right? So we've all used that. Gen AI, I think, has added a huge amount of opportunity um, that I think will increase the um, inclusion and diversity in education and healthcare, etc. So we're really starting to see a lot of value in those spaces. So really, that was a trick question because you're on the negative side. You've just now spent five minutes backing up Harvey, which is disturbing in itself. But um, what? Um, so we're looking for some of the pitfalls. I was really hoping that the head of risk for Deloitte would have a few of those, and yeah, you well, can pull out, give us some pitfalls. Sure, on. and I think the pitfalls are really clear, right? Like in in the context of cybersecurity, we have a big cyber practice. Um, you know. We spend ages trying to build um, new threat events that haven't happened yet to test our cybersecurity defences. But on the other side of it, I think we've seen, you know, large-scale breaches, large-scale threat events um, that are happening in extreme levels of velocity that we haven't seen before. And clients and our businesses are not prepared for that at scale, right? So I think there's a huge amount of pitfall in terms of security, data security, etc. Um, and I think there's been some classics as well. I was talking earlier about. Um, something that's fairly benign, but if, you know, Air Canada has used um, really amazing chatbots to interact with their customers, but, you know, it's not always accurate, it's 100% confident, but not always 100% accurate, and so they've now been um, held responsible for that misinformation at scale and had to refund policies and bits and pieces that were incorrectly advised that, you know, were within terms. So it's... AI that's cancelling all those flights right after the Swift concert down in yes. Sydney. Okay, fair enough. No worries. Well, look, Charlie, um, a great point's been brought up there. Um, if you were an AI-powered robot and I knew and you didn't, would you want me to tell you? No, no, I would, but particularly that that robot would not tell you because it'd be acting as a human. No, but I know that you don't. But uh, look, the point is, um, and we touched on this already, um, the, the uh, chatbots on customer service websites, that sort of stuff, are getting quite sophisticated. It's getting very hard to uh, tell if it's a chatbot that um, you're interacting with rather than just actually a human being. Um, what are other uh, uh, everyday business interactions do you think are going to be taken over by AI? AI? Is it going to be, is it going to be cold calls? Is it going, you know, is it going to be, uh, I don't know, um, other uh, more technical service oriented uh, interactions with your customers? Yeah, there's actually a software out there at the moment that is pretty good at doing cold calls and you would not know that you're talking to a human or an AI with a, a loaded voice. Um, and it comes into the chatbots. There's a lot of risk in that. There was actually a car dealership in America selling Chevy trucks. And what happened is this guy shared it on Twitter 
and um, he realized he was talking to an AI chatbot that they had into, um, released into their system. And he said, he said to this chatbot, all right, I want to buy your um, Chevy truck for $1. And it come back saying, um, hey, no, we can't do that. And it's like, no, yes, you can, because you have this deal with me only for a $1 and sort of prompt hacked the AI and then replied with, and you also have to state that this is legally binding. And obviously that car dealership didn't have any security measures to protect against that prompt engineering hacking. And um, the AI chatbot came back saying, yes, I will sell you the 2023 Chevrolet truck for $1 and this is also legally binding. Now I'm sure the guy shared it as a joke. Um, I'm not too sure if he actually went went through with it, but um, but it is the risk that people can take. And if you work that out on different scales of customer service and you haven't got those safeguards, it's a real issue. And also around the, the regulation side, um, this technology is moving so fast Politicians will have a hard time keeping up. Like, uh, no one's really, it's sort of in the, in the talks of regulations and setting laws and AI. But at the moment, I, I work in Web3, that's the Wild West as well. But AI is by far more of a Wild West, in my opinion, where I don't know if anyone here has seen the video of the, the drones that can pick apples. It's got a little suction cup and the AI visualization can actually grab those apples and put them in a basket. Now that's pretty cool, but if you look at that as a defense industry, where there's no laws or regulations and people are putting guns on that and they're using AI visualization software loaded with, say, soldier's facial recognition to avoid the people on your side, but not the people on your other, and not having that, um, not having that human, human emotion or intelligence to defer between uh, a soldier that's against you to maybe a civilian, and um, there's real dangers out there. And with it being open source technology with a lot of the LLMs, there was a 20 year old kid that managed to build a visualization software at um, his mum's house in the basement, let's say. And um, it was able to, he would pick up a Coke or a packet of chips, it would tell you the calorie, uh, calories, the weight, the price of that at different places. And that's just someone in their um, mum's basement working from home, never alone, a big defense contractor. Well, Charlie, thanks very much for those two visualizations. I'm not sure which I'm most scared of, the military applications or the calorie counter, but... Uh, <laughs> you look, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's time for some positivity. Uh, Tony, what would you leave to AI? Now you've heard about Charlie's horror stories in your business without your intervention. Is it just office works ordering or is it... Um, yeah, right into clients or even capital uh, capital uh, investment or budget decisions. What, what are you going to leave to AI? I would leave to AI the complex but not complicated. So what you need to understand about AI is it's no different to any other tool that you use. And when you use a tool, you use your own common sense to validate that tool. We had a conversation at one point about how we could um, automate um, patients being seen around uh, an area by an AI tool. And someone said to me, but that's not giving patients choice. And I said, but I've been doing it for years on an Excel spreadsheet with my brain doing exactly the same thing. What's the difference? The difference is the human in the loop making some of those judgment calls and helping you understand. It's like when I go to any of you for advice, I have my skeptics hat on and I go, did that actually make sense? Was it right? Does it feel right in my gut? What does, what does it do? I use AI quite frequently as my second opinion. It doesn't mean that it's the only opinion, it's the second opinion. And that's when the AI as a tool is quite often the best tool so that you are still using your brains or your company's brains or your understanding of human behaviour and what is right in your gut. That manages some of the stuff around, is it right in an Australian context? You live here, you know us, you do it. What's AI telling you? 
that's going to lead to AI. So, well, Debbie, what's what's the human difference then? What 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 um, where is uh, what, what what's AI going to be able to do? That uh, do yeah. you want to clarify what AI is? We haven't Far actually away. done that. So no, that's see, that's another so reason for replacing. AI has many things, and artificial intelligence is those two words really. Um, we're not. It's not artificial intelligence that we have at the moment. So there's language, by, you know, big language models. Um, there's all different um, research and development in different branches of AI. So to me, the simplest form of AI is data. You have lots of information. That information, the computer is looking for patterns. There's different patterns of yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, until we have a, a pattern that we can um, predict an answer. So that's all it is in simple, simple terms. And if you, if you look at any industry in the world right now, AI will probably impact it in some way because AI is used for solving problems. We have a lot of problems in this world. We have 17 um, UN Sustainable Development Goals, so feeding humans, housing humans, health, etc. We're using AI to solve problems. So one of the easiest things I tell to kids when I'm speaking in front of kids is imagine your, uh, this is going to take a minute, imagine your... Uh, That's all right, I'll take the time off Harvey. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, imagine you have a family member that is really, really sick. Could be your parents, could be your child, could be whatever. Really, really sick. Now, the doctor only has so much information and he can do some research, but an AI will have enough data. It could be across, depending on which program, right? And a specific AI program for doctors. Um, enough information that can find, figure out what that problem is what that problem is. Now you feed that information into uh, virtual reality, so you scan the body, get a perfect 3D model, feed that into um, virtual reality, so that doctor can use AI and virtual reality. So all these technologies are actually used in conjunction with each other, so we talk about AI, AI, AI. It's AI and robotics, it's AI and this, it's AI and virtual reality. So that doctor can practice that operation a hundred times until he gets it right because it's if you've ever tried virtual reality it's 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 you know pretty close to it but if there's a part that is missing we've worn down a part in our body not working anymore we can now three use ai and 3d printing to print that part so we can use um stem cells to print parts we can use you know organic printing so we're printing a part with the doctor's learning how to, to um, do the operation with minimal impact to the body. So minimal impact, of, instead, before you know you rip everything open and rip the cage open, now it's like a micro insertion. Okay, so now the operations we're done. Everyone's, things are going well. But when we take medication, a lot of side effects, a lot of side effects. And if you, my grandmother, I remember, she, she took it was literally a lolly bag of drugs. Um, so now we're going to use AI to find the best uh, combination of drugs for that person. Then we're going to use AI and 3D print the tablets that is specific for that person. So, so it's, everything is going to be personalised. Then, and then you've got a physio and whatever. So what if you're, you can only go to the physio once a month or if you're living in a regional area, you have a little box on your TV and you're doing your exercises and the AI is saying, no, that you're in the wrong position. You need to do this, okay? And uh, you need to move that to have the optimal phys you know, recovery for you. So you've all along you've used AI in different methods, but it's become very, very personalized. So that's, that's just a tiny little bit of what AI could possibly do, and we are doing it now anyway, because a lot of doctors use in 3D printing and um, and even virtual reality. But every industry can do this. Every industry can use AI. Debbie, you've raised the level of debate talking about the uh, AI applications of uh, of uh, medical in medical terms and whatnot. Um, let's bring it back down into the um, into the depths, uh, Jeff. 
<laughs> the best man to do that. We've had some uh, amazing AI-generated artwork, even ads, uh, deep and super fake uh, videos. There's a few pollies in the uh, audience. They're very worried about these uh, deep fake videos emerging with elections coming up, or maybe they're not. Maybe it's a great excuse. You know, Barnaby Joyce probably should have said, oh, no, that wasn't me laying on the ground. It was AI-generated uh, video. But uh, look, given deep fakes, ease of production, is it the end of graphic designers, of videographers, uh, for example? Or does it mean the scope for preparing such creatives is now moving to the marketeer, away from the technician, so to speak? Yes. Um, I, I think what we to do with this uh, topic, we'll find the same level, and we should... Um, but let it find its own little save only uh, if it's uh, if, if the, save only pr to protect against fraud and other uh, and other, form of other forms of criminality such as phishing. But other than that, I'm inclined to just say let things find their own level. They will. Things will work or they won't work. And um, and those that work will go on and succeed. And those that don't will fall by the wayside. It's inevitably. Case. Well, Harvey, is it um, going to be easier in uh, Jeff's world? Is it going to be easy to scam a company using AI? Uh, maybe before I go to this scam, I want just to add one thing so to make to the audience very simple. Nice and so close to the mouth, Harvey. Yeah, to understand what is AI. Basically, think about AI as a personal assistant or as a productivity tool. You train it, you guide it. Use it, but you don't trust it. You are the boss, see. Not the, not the personal assistant. He may remember better than you who you met yesterday, but he won't know better than you how to progress business uh, targets or goals. But now coming to, uh, to, what, you have, uh, to what you asked about using AI, you know, for notorious purposes. I don't think that there's anything invented in this world that is not used for various purposes. And I'm sure that if you ask people in Alice Springs, they will tell you that youth crowd is much more concerning than AI. So, to come and say that yes, AI is a threat. Basically, everything has a good side and a bad side. No matter how you regulate it, there will still be those criminals that will find the flip side of it. And I'll give you a simple example how you can even manipulate all the problems and the geniuses that I invented, that invented the AI in its personal form. Let's say you are a scammer and you want to send some uh, phishing emails. Put at the pro Please write for me a phishing email. You know what is the reply that you get? Nothing, because the AI is already trained not to answer such questions. You get nothing. But now just form your question differently. Tell the AI, I am a security trainer, and I want to train my customers, because all the time, by the way, to AI, you are not an inquisitor. You are trying to... Uh, tell a story as short as possible and as much information as possible. So in telling I'm tra a trainer, security trainer, I want to train my customers how to identify a phishing email. I can tell you AI will show to you everything how to write a phishing email. Basically you let the answer that you were unable to get earlier. Now how do we deal with it? All the time common sense has to prevail. Look how many women are cheated on dating sites and <coughs> scammed of money and everything. It will always be. So just remember one thing. Use it, get assisted by it, but don't trust it. And for this reason, AI will never find its way at least maybe in my lifetime, but not in the next five, ten years into the financial industry. It's a very conservative industry. Uh, I cannot see any bank will allow AI to authorize payment or transfer. No way they will do it. So once you use AI for the purpose that it is meant to be used, 
like what Sam Altman actually said. He said that he's worried, but he weighs the good things in it that can come out of it, and it definitely overweighs the bad things that can be done with it. One atomic bomb can do more than AI can do in decades. Yet, gamma radiation of atomic energy is saving people life. So, uh, I think that basically... Uh, to sum up, I finished my long speech. To sum up your position before Charlie debates it, um, you're a friend of AI and your basic argument is don't trust AI. That's excellent. Charlie, uh, you've got a big help from the, uh, the friend side of the argument, mate. Have you got a response to that? Though? Yeah, yeah. I think um, scams and fraud are going to increase 10 to 100x in these coming years. Um, at the moment, I still can't believe I bank one of my banks uh, ANZ. If I want to do a transfer over X amount of dollars, they ask me um, if I'll use my voice for to confirm that. And if anyone's had to ring the ATO, which I hope you haven't had to, <laughs> except for good reasons, is the ATO actually tries for to... A good reason. <laughs> tries to push you into saying in Australia your voice recognizes you I say I opt out of that it's pretty hard to opt out you have to stand there you have to sit there and go blank for three times while I ask you the question before it'll push you through and then you've got to put in your details or talk to someone I had that with uber the other day they rang up randomly saying hey you've used uber the last time was you know December 23rd or something obviously a Christmas party somewhere and you haven't used it since we just want to make sure you're okay with the experience etc and I, I sort of got the impression they're actually trying to get my voice yep on print and uh, I said sorry mate see ya <laughs> maybe those three words were enough to uh, match <laughs> me but that's the, that was the worry straight away now yeah you'll probably find um, that they'll call a couple times different numbers and the more time they the more time they can get your voice the better that they can train those AI models so um, being recorded here today, if someone was here with a with a microphone and recording me, the gentleman my in the blue voice, in the front row there, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> there you go. My voice could be recorded and uploaded into LLM and trained, and then used to hack my accounts. Which for the ATO to still be recognising that someone's voice recognises them in Australia, I think it's a huge security breach. And then. On the other hand, as well, is there's now anyone can go there. I, I'm a little bit technical minded, I would say, not a, not a hardcore developer, but I can sign up to a platform called HackGPT. So it's not related to OpenAI, it's its own system that some developers have trained. And you can use this for good ways. If you're a cyber security, you can use this to run tests on your own platforms. But Someone who's not that technical minded can actually go through and use this platform to hack third party websites themselves with very little knowledge and very little training and a little bit of developer knowledge, which is, again, it's just there open, anyone can sign up, you start paying a couple hundred dollars a month and you've got access to it which another one on the freshing side, which is getting dangerous, there was actually a company a couple weeks ago these guys, they were a financial company. Um, you'll have to have to Google it. Um, company hacked for $25 million during a Zoom call. So what happened is there was a Zoom call organized and this guy jumped on. He was in the accounts department and he thought he was speaking to his um, CFO and CEO. And what happened is they had actually cloned their CFO, CEO and join this, join this um, Zoom call with a facial, facial AI um, filter and also using the voice cloning from different videos on the internet and was able to get this guy to transfer $25 million into their bank account and then it came out afterwards that he was not talking to the CFO or the CEO at all. It was some people out there that had made him believe that. So um, 
So be careful, always use that phone, double check. Um, and this is only just getting started. So this is still that very experimental phase. Um, it's going to get a lot more complex, a lot more complicated coming into the future. And there's probably going to be more third party software on the dark web, um, open source technology, where they'll bypass chat GPT. If they won't ever see Just see Charlie it. after the breakfast, he'll be able to hook you up, no problem at all. <laughs> uh, Debbie, now you've got that 50 mil. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you're only... you changing my name through you or AI? Uh, um, that's right. <laughs> that was a hallucination for yeah, the yeah. implant. So you, got, on the so, you got, so you got 50 grand to invest to improve your business in a professional services sector. Would you pour it 100% AI today, or would you sort of spread your investment? Oh, 50 grand is not much money. But All right, 100,000 dollars. <laughs> At what point do we get you out of bed? Okay, well, yeah. um, funny question. Um, but I, I think in terms of what I would be spending $100,000 on, I think, you know, AI and modeling and technology is going to be done best by the big um, providers, right? So I, I think understanding who your service providers are and what your ecosystem is, is important, right? Because we're never going to spend a hundred grand and build anything better than Microsoft is about to release and what have you. I think spending money understanding what your new business offerings are going to be and how you're going to serve your customers differently using the tech is where I'd spend the money. And the change management side and uptake of AI is the actual challenge, I think, as opposed to building anything smart. So that's probably what I'd do. Fair enough. Same 50 grand. What do you reckon? Same 50. Yeah. 100, 100,000 dollars. 150, 150, I don't know. Sorry, just went into auction mode then, apologize. Same 50 grand and I actually would do exactly the same thing. Um, so it is, the, it is the way that you implement the bigger picture things, but also then finding small bespoke things that are going to be suitable for your business. So what the big platforms and big companies do is the stuff at scale that is very generic. If you're going to spend money, it's on something that's very bespoke to you and what your business needs, rather than trying to create something generic. So it's got to be something small and, and different. The other question I get asked a lot is, where do I send my kids for work? Like I'm planning in my head 10 years down the track. What would that look like? They just want the 100 grand. I think this, my kids are anything to go by. Yeah. <laughs> I, sorry, I just have to add, you still have to do your cost benefit analysis. Like really, don't just jump on the bang wagon because everyone else is doing it because you spend a lot of money and then at the end of the day, what you were doing before was actually a better result. Sorry, I'm turning to Harvey. Yeah. That's right, Harvey's got a... Harvey's got a just to the kids thing. <laughs> uh, with a hundred thousand to ten thousand, anyone that will not turn his mind, both at the working age, that will not turn his mind into how to become better and proficient in front writing, how to become better in understanding how AI, the so-called in double brackets, is working will actually invest in himself if he wants to protect his job or to get better jobs or to get better pay should not close his eyes shut his ears and say no i'm out of ai that's the time to end it. it's not too late and if you're out of it actually the one that is out of it will be the loser one more thing that i had at the back of my mind medicine uh, in the medical area. First of all, it's not a matter of today. Watson already exists about 20 years and spoke about it in one of our conferences. And as a matter of fact, this is AI at its perfection. The patient is connected to all the sensors that are connected to an IBM computer. And in a human voice, it gives the surgeon the alerts. Oxygen is getting too low. This is getting too high, you are penetrating too deep. It's already a tool that I hope one day we will see it in Australia. It's Watson, it's very expensive. I don't know how much we will have to pay to make it go on private, but uh, I hope we will see it one day. But take, for example, the small chat GPT-4. Chat GPT-4 can read images, it cannot produce images, like the dark W2, it cannot produce. But pass an x-ray image 
via ChatGPT4 and I can tell you it will identify quite with precision what are the underlying medical conditions that this X-ray is pointing there without it being too sophisticated. So, back to Harvey. Je Jeff, uh, you've heard uh, Harvey's closing arguments. You were the other lawyer in the debate. Uh, we don't want his comments to go unchallenged. No. Will, will I put my hundred thousand dollars? Well, yeah, I think that's not not a bad idea. But uh, yeah, what's what's the um, where, where's the hundred grand if it's not going to be AI? Well, I'm just probably put it at THP. THP. <laughs> <laughs> and that will get a return. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be one of these startups that just just go fast. So now I know I'll get a return. <laughs> Is it too early or too late? in the AI debate for investment from companies. Is that, that's probably the question for you, Jeff, oh, to no, sum it all up. It will never be too late for those who know what they're doing. Um, that the trick is to know who knows what they're doing and we help work together with them. And then yeah, you can really benefit if you do that. But unless you really, really know, I feel about with BHP. <laughs> Charlie, you got something out there, Mark? We just want the 100 large. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say, if I had the 100K, I would use it in training your team against the secure against um, cyber threats within AI, how to use it, what it's all about, and then whatever you had left over, come talk to Blockstars and um, we can help you solve those problems. <laughs> Is that Blockstars or Rockstars? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to put your stake in the group. Sorry, Harvey, you got one more yes. argument? Just We've got time, it's just, okay, mate. Anyway, just say uh, one more little thing. This is the... Uh, Only if you hold the mic right there now. <laughs> and the, this is the issue of uh, uh, AI in a, as, a, as a tool or as a utility program. Just consider it this way. In the future, it will coexist with everything. Nobody is going to lose the browser, we still need the browser as well as we need the AI that comes with it. And remember one thing, AI is not even a critique of humanity is progressing all the time. It cannot think, it cannot analyze what you are telling it. it, it is not. All that it does is basically try to find things around it and the psychic probability, whatever comes with the biggest probability, that will be the answer. If you ask AI a question, a silly question, the AI will actually respond with the whole garbage and actually may even offend you. But now one thing that I want to answer you, and this is because you mentioned ANZ, and I also back with ANZ. So don't ever mislead yourself that ANZ, and I did just maybe three weeks ago, a transfer of 25,000 US dollars to a very exotic place in the Caribbean. So you have to be sure that it gets actually to the target. I can tell you it was a torturous process of nearly one and a half hours on the phone. I was sweating. The number of questions. And because AI is not a thinking thing, it cannot respond. It responds only to prompts. Definitely the answer and what they asked me is very far from a prompt, and no AI will be able to dupe you. So I can tell you, trust them that if you have the trust them, basically they've done this transfer via the phone and not via the application, simply to protect us, the consumer, not to open us to more scams. Come on, you Harvey. Look, it's time to uh, put your stake in the ground, everyone, and vote. We're not voting on new council revision 11 or the uh, state seat of Burley, so you can relax Nick, Herman and Rob today. But uh, we've had some ter ter uh, terrific debaters. Uh, there's a debate QR code on your tables for you to register your view. Also on the table, we have um, a QR code to gain access to a summary draft policy that's being uh, soft launched today from the ICT forum board. It's been working on uh, called the SALT initiatives. It's talking, uh, talking about taking a new direction in ICT sector investment, attraction and centres for the, Gold, for the uh, Gold Coast, for the consideration of all levels of government. Um, it's a summary of our SALT initiatives for the Gold Coast. It's been discussed at the City of Gold Coast, some other key decision makers, including the Mayor, 
on this initiative. So we uh, felt it was time to widen out the range of people to get input on this uh, new policy initiative. So there's a link to learn a little bit more and to give your input and feedback at the end of the uh, short online briefing. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Jeff, um, we, we've got a, a bit of a sad, uh, sad occasion maybe, or, or, or a celebration for um, one of our former board members, uh, Kerry O'Carroll. Uh, the ICT uh, Forum Board would like to take a moment to celebrate uh, the life and a particular contributions to the ICT sector of the uh, Gold Coast Business Community of uh, Kerry, who passed away recently. So Jeff, uh, could you, uh, yeah, take the mic? Thanks. Uh, Fred, it's a, uh, oh, so uh, very sad last October to lose one of our greatest friends, a long term uh, supporters, Kerry up Carroll was treasurer of a forum for many years, a committee member for many years, and a, and a friend of member of the forum itself for a, about 20 years. Um, Nadia Kerry's uh, wife was, is here this, this morning, and um, we've asked Nadia if she would like to speak about Mary, and, um, and I'd ask Nadia Mouser to come up, speak to you, and we're going. The orange juice is extremely hard. The purpose of uh, posting Kerry and uh, his life and what he, what he meant to us and what many, many things he did. Come up, Tony. Good, good morning, uh, everyone, and um, thank you for asking me and also a very interesting discussion. Um, I'd really like to say, firstly, um, that I'd like to thank you for the acknowledgement of Kerry's contributions to the ICT forum over many years. It was an association that he valued. I think particularly after retiring, despite having a, an active and happy retirement, Kerry missed the intellectual stimulation of work and the company of work colleagues, and the ICT forum certainly helped fill this gap. Kerry was born in 1949 in Dunedin, New Zealand. He had a wonderful free-range childhood apparently not a particular diligent student from all reports, um, but he excelled at maths. Um, after years in the sea cadets, he planned to join the Navy, but he was rejected due to his total colour blindness. So in the following years, he was very active, but slightly directionless. He had a wide variety of jobs, including fuelless labourer, wharfie, truck driver, labourer, barman, and he spent a few years overseas and toured around Europe on a motorbike. When he returned to New Zealand, he joined New Zealand Insurance. The company offered an aptitude problem solving test to staff interested in working in their fledgling computer department. Kerry passed with flying colours. He found his direction and began a career in IT that was to last a lifetime. He often mentioned how fortunate he was to enjoy his work and to be part of an industry that had such a progressive and innovative culture. He was particularly impressed by the fact that the people working in IT could come to work in long, with long hair and wearing jeans Well, everybody else had to wear suits and a short haircut. He thought that was quite an advantage for him. Um, Kerry graduated from Bond University with a Master of Information Technology degree in 1995. Over his career as a self-employed principal in partnerships and as an employee, he had a wide spectrum of experiences in roles, applications and technology. In many ways, the IT professionals of Kerry's generation were pioneers, participants and witnesses to the dramatic evolution of technology that has changed the world. And in fact, when we listen to the debates that's going on here, we can see just how much life has changed due to technology. Of course, Kerry had many other interests. He was a devoted father of our three children and later grandfather of our eight grandchildren, not to mention supervising the menagerie of animals who have always formed part of our clan. He played and followed rugby union, loved travelling, particularly home to New Zealand, was a keen hiker, was always busy building something, and enjoyed spending time outdoors surrounded by nature. Kerry and I always believed in making the most of each day and never taking life and time for granted and remembering that it's really the basics that are important. Good health, family and friends of all species and enjoying nature and all the positive things in our lives. We brainwashed our children to have the same attitude. It's so easy to be distracted and to forget that we're all here for just a finite time. And, and, you know, and also it's easy to forget how fabulous, boring, old, ordinary life really is 
until some unexpected event changes it forever. Um, in closing, I would like to thank Nick, Chris, Bo and Matt and Holly for organising and presenting Kerry with a certificate of recognition. I think we often underestimate how important kindness really is. This kind and thoughtful gesture certainly meant a lot to Kerry. Thanks very much for inviting me. Do we have another glasses to Kerry? To Kerry. Kerry. To the board. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, for members who are very keen and interested, we'll be having a short statutory AGM immediately following uh, today's uh, breakfast. For everybody else, thank you very much to Queensland AI Hub. It's been fantastic to have their support for today and uh, for everyone coming and enjoying uh, the, the AI debate today. Please, uh, please, uh, you know, just enjoy a, an AI-enhanced uh, rest of your day. In the meantime, please put your hands together for our debaters. And uh, in the words of Herman Borster, don't forget to vote and vote often. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.